and it's at a weight that's proved very successful for British boxers since World War II, the 11 stone 6 middleweight division in which Britain has had three world champions in the past 30 odd years. There was Randolph Turpin, conqueror of Sugar Ray Robinson in the 1950s, Terry Downs who beat America's Paul Pender in the 1960s and Alan Minter who took the world title from Vito Antofermo at the start of the 80s. Tuesday's contestants are Tony Simpson, the European champion, and Mark Kalor, the British and Commonwealth champion. In their 12-round fight, all three titles will be at stake. It's winner, take all. The Queen Victoria at Quinneborough, just outside Leicester, is the rural retreat of Tony Simpson. Tony's very much a country lad, tucked away with family and dogs, hating the very idea of coming to London, where the only lure is gold. In contrast, Mark Kaler is London-born and bred, an out-and-out cockney, training in the famous Terry Lawless gym in the heart of London's Dockland. Mark's never had a pro fight anywhere except London. There's another contrast. This will be only Kaler's second title fight. Simpson's had ten of them, including a shot at the world title. But it doesn't seem to worry Mark. He's a very good fighter, very good puncher. But I'm going to win. Simpson does have a problem. It's the old one that, once you've tried and lost for the world title, it's hard to summon the same enthusiasm again. I'm in the gym every night for this one. Normally, I perhaps turn up about three times a week. That's all. But this one, I'm, I'm out of bed and I'm looking to do a good job. He, I know he's, a, he's, he's taller and he's got good reach and he's very, you know, he's a powerful puncher. But uh, I just say to myself, you know, just get into that gym, get, turn up on the gym every night, turn, turn up every night to the gym and uh, work hard. And I think that on the night, I'm just going to go out there and do my business. You know, I don't know how. So th I've, most of the kids I've fought have been six footers. So, um, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not up against any obstacles I've not come across before. But Caleb is young and ambitious, and uh, so he's, I've got to get the bit between my teeth and get on with it. Simpson has been around a long time. He had his first pro fight on his 18th birthday, and now he's 26. He's had nearly twice as many fights as Kaler, more than Alan Minter had. Unlike Minter, Simpson didn't win the world title, but then he had to face the man who destroyed Minter, the American Marvin Hagler, on a winter's night in Massachusetts nearly two years ago. He's trying to fight, but he's being out for... Tremendous efforts by Simpson. But he's coming off the earth and he's over again. And this might be the end. His legs seem to have gone. He's put it all in and it hasn't worked. And it stops and it's over. And Hagler has retained the middleweight championship of the world. A brave cry by Simpson. But you only have to look at him to see what happens. A year later, again in America, Simpson took another knock. A bad defeat at the hands of a lesser American, Don Lee who had him over four times. I was on course for Agler again. You know, I, done, I, I beat John Collins in great style in, after I had a good rest, and uh, I just never sat down and thought about things. I just rushed into things and uh, never got myself 100% and come unstuck. But I think if I can I get a good one over Kayla, Mark Kayla, and, um, and then get over Donnelly again, then we're looking it's uh, maybe an, an eliminator or someone right up there who can perhaps put me in that position. Well, Hagler destroyed him, didn't he? It was um, one-sided. What would you have felt about your own chances with Hagler at that time? At that time, I was just uh, I was learning the game myself, so uh, that's. Uh, and now, do you think you do you think you would go in with a chance against Hagler? Well, after um, people seen me get beat by Buster Drake, and they'd, they'd, they'd laugh at me if I said I thought I had a chance with Hagler. But um, personally, I do, yeah. yeah. Kayla lives in Raynham in Essex with his American wife, Pat, and Cisco the Alsatian. It wasn't difficult to spot him as a future star, even back in 1979, when he was still a teenage amateur. One of the first times I ever saw you, I sorted this out from among my little collection. This is the program for the, uh, the 79 National Association of Boys Club Championships. And uh, I marked something up against you there. You beat a van called Robert Armstrong, and I put two stars against it and wrote class against you. Wasn't a bad judge, was I? That's right. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, there's some good boys down here as well. Yeah, now pros. Nick Roosh yeah. is there, and uh, Keith Wallace. Yeah, yeah, Nick's a club mate of mine at the moment. Did you enjoy life as an amateur boxer? <clears throat> yeah, it was very tough. I was working at um, Smithfield Meat Market at the time. 
And I had to do the same sort of training I do now. But um, <laughs> I had Cisco. But I had to work as well. So I was up at five o'clock in the morning, back home for a couple of hours sleep, and then I had to um, go down to the gym in the afternoon. Despite those difficulties, he won the ABA title in 1980 and then went to Moscow for the Olympics. He beat this Brazilian, but lost to a Romanian in the quarterfinals. That was his cue to turn pro, and the only real setback since has been the hammering he took from Buster Drayton earlier this year. Round seven. Surely he won't survive this. And Owen Kaler's gone down again to take another count, having been signaled to go on. Mike Jacobs tells him to go on again. Oh, that was one punch too many. Drayton's only light middleweight. It was um, a very, very bad uh, loss as far as I'm concerned. But um, since it, after that fight, I had a um, minor operation on my hand, which I've got the scars to prove. And um, I'm now punching with the full power of my right hand, which I couldn't do against Drayton. I'd, and when you fight a guy like that, you've got to be able to, to hurt them. And I wasn't able to do that. Where did you do the hand? Was that, was that in the fight with Gums? No, I've done that in the, in the, the um, fight with Ralph Moncrief. I threw a, a right uppercut to his um, stomach and knocked all the stuffing mm. out of it. They thought it was a, a, a so-called a ganglion, but it was just a uh, mess scar tissue underneath the skin. That's since been corrected, and uh, I can't wait to fight Buster Drayton again now. So Mr Simpson will be feeling the full weight of that hand? That's right, yeah. He brought the right hand into use at the Albert Hall last month against the American David Cote. Cote never really stood a chance, and it was pulled off in the sixth. Now for Simpson, and another major event in his life. My wife's um, due to have a baby four days after the fight, so that's, that's um, a special reason I want to win. Could be a very, it could be a very close race between the two events. Yeah, um, I hope she holds her. Do you normally go and watch Mark Box? No, I haven't been since the uh, Glen McKeon fight about a year ago. I won't be going to this one either. Well, I suppose you can't go to this one very well. But normally, um, you're not that keen on, on boxing. No, I prefer not to go. I get worried going there. I'd rather stay at home, mm. just relax. Relaxing is one luxury Tony Simpson can't afford. Everything will depend on whether he's drummed up the old form, the animal eagerness that took him to a sensational three-round victory over Alan Minter in 1981. Oh, good punch! He's got Minter with the left! If, if I've got a threat in this country, it's Mark Kayla. You know, that's what I've always said. Is anyone going to threaten me in this country, it's going to be Mark Kayla. And, and they think it's time that he fought me. So, um, you know, it's going to be like a, a, Minter, a Minter Simpson. Only uh, I'm, not, I'm not too um, ready to quit at this minute. So I'm very keen. These, these fights happen uh, every, every so often. I'm, I mean, the last fight like this was the, the Minter against Simpson when Simpson was the up-and-coming fighter, and Minter was the, the, the guy I've all the experience. So, um, I mean, I'm not, not overawed because, I, because I'm fighting for the fighter more experience than me. It doesn't, doesn't worry me. Um, I know what's in front of me, and I know I can do it. If people think, I oh, might be another Minter, but he was like 30, I think, when he packed it up. I'm only, 20, I'm only 26. Kayla's three years younger, full of ambition, and graced with talent, but the Drayton defeat is a recent memory, and supposing Sibson finds again the form of three or four years ago, what then? And it is all over, it must be all over, as Shirelli sinks on his haunches in his own corner. And he's gone this time, and Salvamini can't make it, he can't get up, he's knocked out, and Sibson has won the European middleweight title. I'm going to go out there and, and win in good style because I never. If I do come out this, if I do come out of boxing, no way am I going to come second best to anybody in Britain. Uh, it's my it's my pride. What it tells me, if you're going to finish on any kind of a note, it's not like losing in America. You can forget that people will forget that. But on your own territory, you've always got to like finish up top dog. Else, otherwise, go out like. That's terrible. Going out a loser. That's not for me going to be some fight and you can see it here on sports night next wednesday together with snooker and Simpson of leicester the european champion and mark kaylor of london the british and commonwealth champion with all three titles at stake and the crowd already roaring their heads off as we waited for the first bell the great confrontation at last 
and what a reception this fight gets. There hasn't been atmosphere at Wembley like this for many years. And at once you can see just how much height and reach Sipson, the European champion, is having to concede. And Sipson must feel almost as though he's in a foreign country. It sounds to me like 90% of this Wembley crowd is on Kalo's side. Kalo, British and Commonwealth champion, white trunks. The three titles these men hold between them are all at stake tonight. It's winner take all. Kayla's reach and undoubted skill against Simpson's raw hooking aggression and undoubted punch. Well, he may feel as though he's in a strange land tonight, Simpson, but nonetheless, the bookmakers who concede nothing to sentiment have made Simpson a slight favourite. Good hooks from Simpson. He got inside the reach and he used the hooks well with the left. Jabs Kayla. Simpson with almost twice as many pro fights as Kayla. Ten major title fights behind him. And this is only the second that Kayla's had. singing is for Mark Kayla. But at the moment, Kayla's being beaten to the punch. Little between them in weight. Simpson 11, five and a half. Kayla, four ounces heavier. Lively opener. The first of a scheduled 12 rounds. And maybe the edge with Simpson. Simpson only 26 and yet he's been around a long time. He had his first pro fight on his 18th birthday. And now he's had 56 pro fights and 50 of them have been wins. And he's been in for the world title with Marvin Hagler. He came in with a couple of beautiful left hooks early on in that first round. There's the first. And I think he, yes, he followed up with one to the stomach. Second round, round two. <laughs> Kayla in the white trunks. A left elbow injury caused uh, for Simpson, caused postponement of this fight earlier in the year. Simpson, in fact, hasn't boxed since February. And it's 21 months since he fought Hagler. Kayla's had 29 fights, 27 wins. Simpson's left hand is very quick. the Simpson supporters make themselves heard. That left hook of Simpson's is a potent punch. This could be a key punch in this fight. Kayla's been made to breathe hard by that.
Ipsom knows full well the defeat here could mean the end of the road. He wouldn't be too keen to go on without a title. He hasn't always trained as well as he might in the past, but I think this time Simpson has really worked hard. Good right from Kayla. This is certainly the most uh, eagerly awaited domestic fight for a long time in this country. And this is the top division in the country at the moment, the middleweights. Two good men here, and behind them, men like Harold Graham and Errol Christie and Jimmy Price, all waiting their chance. Kayla hanging on there. The action is furious already in the second round. Simpson's nose is bleeding. He's ripping the hooks in. Now then, can Kayla withstand this storm? He's under the sort of pressure that Buster Drayton put him under when Drayton beat him. And to everybody's disappointment, except perhaps the fighters, the bell ends that furious second round and both men felt it there what a set to they had in the last 30 seconds of that Kayla for a moment looking very disturbed he took one or two sharp punches but Simpson didn't come out unscathed either he's got some blood coming from his nose so he's been hurt and this is proving to be the fight we hoped it would be that nose could be troublesome for Simpson. They've had trouble stopping the blood. That might affect his breathing. They've taken no time to warm up. They've gone straight at him. And this Wembley, absolutely packed for the first time in many years. Not a spare seat. Kayla giving Simpson some trouble now. Simpson looking all around him, outside the ring. The country boy versus the cockney. Simpson relying almost entirely on that left hook. And Kayla taking these early punches well. Good right hand inside from Kayla. The battle swaying first one way, then the other. Slight cut underneath the left eye of Simpson. Very slight, but it's there. So Kayla's punches have brought their reward. The bleeding nose, and now the cut underneath the left eye, which Denny Mancini gets to work on. It's hardly noticeable, and it's not in a dangerous place. So the corner won't be too worried about that. But it does show that Kayla is getting the damaging punches through. Both men off their stools and ready before the bell. Kayla, the taller of these two men, with the longer reach. Simpson is only five feet eight.
Kayla had his first pro fight in October 1980, four and a half years after Simpson had his. The ferocity of this uh, punching inside is really quite something. John Coyle, the referee. This fight under European Boxing Union rules. But the referee and the two judges, all British. The compulsory eight count rule is enforced for this. Simpson, when he gets within range, is a demon. But in order to get past the long left of Kayla, he's had to take those punches that have damaged his face. Four rounds completed. And no telling at this stage which way the battle might sway. There's one of the men who's uh, waiting to challenge the winner, Harold Bomber Graham from Sheffield, undefeated. This has not been a lucky arena for Kayla. His two professional defeats, the disqualification against Serda and the stoppage against Drayton, both happened in this ring. Three titles at stake, European belonging to Simpson, British and Commonwealth belonging to Kayla. And in his time, Simpson has held all three. A man of tremendous championship experience. Good punches by Simpson. The jolting left hand again. Whoever wins this fight is going to earn it. Almost demented at times, Simpson. Um, absolutely determined to win this fight. And hard and furious action all the way. Another little mark appearing there by the left eye of Simpson. Well, this is typical of the fast and furious action we've had all the way through this fight. Second round. Round six. Kalos had a minor operation on his right hand to cure some trouble there in recent months. And he told me that Simpson will be feeling the full weight of that tonight. I don't think Simpson has yet felt the full weight of Kalos' right hand. Most of Mark's work has been done with the left.
attack by Simpson. Simpson again, a little bit high up, and Kayla has to hold on. Simpson's nose bleeding again. Hard fight. <laughs> Kayla under real pressure now. The best round Simpson's had. But he hasn't put Kayla down. Overwhelmingly Simpson in that round. Well, that was more like the old Simpson of about three or four years ago and Kayla felt the full weight of the attacks there so there's bound to be just a little concern in that corner now well after that good run Simpson continued to hold the upper hand we rejoined the fight in the 10th it's still the fighter against the boxer the fighter is Simpson and the fighter for my money at the moment has got the better of it No knockdowns at any stage. Hard, bruising. Good struggle all the way. Two rounds to go. Kalos fought the best fight of his life. No doubt about that. Only one title fight behind him when he won the British title. And he was on the floor in that one. Got up to win him five rounds. Now these last two rounds are going to be a real test for him. Well, this is further than Kohler's ever been. Kohler's right hand hasn't been too much in evidence. Still, Simpson hasn't managed to repeat the tremendous sixth round when he really was on top. And there's the right hand from Kayla, and for the first time, Simpson seemed to back off and didn't like it. That may well be the best punch Kayla's thrown so far, a right hand. And it looked to me as though it hurt Simpson. So this fight may yet hold some tremendous climax.
and the London fans have come to life now. You wonder how much better Kayla might have done if he'd thrown some of these rights earlier. Simpson suddenly walks into all sorts of trouble at the end of the 11. Simpson on the receiving end with a vengeance. Kalor's right hand has suddenly taken over the fight. The stocky Simpson, the European champion, the taller Kalor, British and Commonwealth champion, and those three titles now all on the line in the next three minutes. Simpson shows he still has plenty to offer. And this Wembley Arena seething with excitement. It's all or nothing now for the pair of them. at Wembley like this for a long time. They put so much in over the previous 11 rounds. together neither man prepared to give way what a finish what a fight the tension now almost unbearable and Kayla spits out his gum shield perfect climax to a major title fight the pair of them very nearly sold out It's all a lot closer than it was earlier. That's the end, and now we have to wait for the decision, and the two of them fall into each other's arms the way two great fighters should at the end of a marvellous fight. Well, that was the fight we waited a long time to see. And it turned out to be a cracker. The referee and two judges all scored it for Simpson by two rounds. Simpson then holder of three titles, and today he said he'd be holding on to the British Championship. One more British title win will give him the Lonsdale belt outright. His next fight may be abroad. He'd like to avenge that defeat by the American Don Lee. Meanwhile, there's a queue of Britons waiting to challenge, apart from Kayla. Harold Graham, Errol Christie, Jimmy Price, any one of them itching to get at Simpson. And Kaylor, well, he was told he'd become a father just a few hours before the fight. His wife, Pat, had given birth to a son. So, happiness on one side, disappointment on the other. Kaylor was an early visitor today to see the new baby. Right. Oh, while we're up there. Always the sets. 
How do you feel this morning? Mixed emotions, lost the fight, but uh, uh, father of a baby. Mixed son. emotions. Um, I'm very, very uh, pleased with the, the support I've got. I've got the best supporters in the country. I just like to thank them now. And uh, obviously, I'm, I'm just really pleased about the baby now. The fight, I can get over that and come again. But um, this is beautiful. A couple of proud parents this morning. Yeah, <laughs> sure. You were expecting a daughter, weren't you? Uh, I think most other people were expecting me to have a girl. I don't know why, but I, I always knew it was going to be a boy. Have you picked a name? Yeah, it's going to be called Little Jimmy. Little Jimmy? Yeah. Jamie, but we've Pat been... Pat says Jamie, you say Jimmy. <laughs> Pat says Jamie, but I'm going to call it Jimmy. He's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. I don't think Mark was talking about Tony Gabba, but Tony was there at the hospital with them. Well, with an extra mouth to feed, I imagine it won't be long before Mark's back in the ring, earning a few bob. Frank Bruno's heavyweight fight with the American...